Father, we love you. We thank you for this time together. Thank you, Lord, that you're the teacher by the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God. We come before you with hungry hearts, open hearts, just like we sang this morning, Lord. We're yours. We're here to learn, to sit at your feet, Lord Jesus, and to put into practice all that you've provided for us, all that you've given to us. And now we give you thanks in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody said? Amen. Amen. Last week I spoke about uh, grace and works and I was concerned during the week that I had left you hanging and that maybe there was misunderstanding there and I don't want to be uh, labeled a works preacher, hallelujah. I don't think you would label me that but uh, you know I don't want you to get the idea of that so I'm going to try to bring that home today. And if you missed last week, you need to get the message so it all ties in. But uh, we are certainly saved by grace. I cannot work for my salvation. I cannot earn it. I cannot buy it. I can't look good enough for it. I can't look bad enough for it. There's nothing I can physically do other than believe. And so... Please keep that in mind as I share this because I want you to, um, I want you to understand that the grace song we heard this morning, the grace message, everything is because of his grace that we're here today. It's not by our works of righteousness. It's by his grace. Please don't misunderstand me. However, there is a part we are to play in all this. And so I kind of want to address that this morning. I looked in the electronic concordance, and the word work, and if you put in work, it, then it'll do workman or works. You know, it brings them all up. And so the word work in some form is used over 600 times in the Bible between Genesis and Revelation. Well, then I narrowed it down and did away with the Old Testament part, and it's 200 and sometimes in the New. So that's a lot. And uh, so it's discussed in the Bible. And therefore, we need to get a grip on this because the world is teaching various different ways. The church is teaching various different ways. Uh, Some of that being taught out there is that God has done everything he does everything so therefore you don't do anything Um, you're saved because God saved you and you had no choice of it that's what I'm saying that it's being taught some of that is being taught Um, others are saying that you gotta earn it I mean there the pendulum swings both ways well you got to go down the balance of the middle and uh, you can't earn it and you must do something to be saved and that is believe make the choice Um, so if you go too far on either side you've gotten the ditch and uh, you're going to have problems and so um, I am a grace preacher I am a man of grace and I thank God for his grace but I don't want to come behind on any blessing either. So I'm going to pursue it. And uh, we're going to talk about that. Look in Luke, the sixth chapter. Luke chapter six, that's where we're going to begin. In verse uh, 39, Jesus teaching says, He spake a parable unto them. Can the blind lead the blind? Now, if you were in a church where the pastor is not saved, then the blind would be leading the blind. (laughs) Right? If you're in a church where the pastor is not following God, blinded to the things of God, the blind is leading the blind. Will they not both fall into the ditch, Jesus said. Yes, they will. 
One will lead the other one right into it. And you'll think you're right all the way down there. That's the problem. That's the deception. Verse 40. Look at this now. This is Jesus' words. The disciple is not above his master. But, say but. but. Everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Hallelujah. Now that word perfect can be uh, used like mature, um, perfected, experienced, mature. Okay? So he says here, you're not above the Lord, but if you're going to be mature, or as you mature, then you'll be like him. Be as him. Isn't that the goal of Christianity? Sure it is. I don't remember Jesus ever having a problem with any situation or circumstance he faced. I don't remember ever something frightening him, something keeping him home because he was sick or not feeling well, uh, because time crunch had got hold of him, uh, money was a problem. I never saw that in his ministry, never. He always had complete control. So it says here that if... You are matured, perfected. You'll be like him. Praise the Lord. Then it goes on to discuss verse 41. You can't be critical and condemning of other people around you when you've got problems yourself. And skip on down to verse 43. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. In other words, your actions, the end result of what you do. Verse 44 says, Every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Here's the key verse, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of where? His heart. That's the basis, the grounds for life. Your heart. Okay, A good man from the good treasure of his heart brings forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth that which is evil. Yes. For of the abundance of the heart, our mouth speaks. You can tell where you're at by what you say under pressure. It's not what you make yourself say. It's whenever you're under pressure what you say. I have a lot of people tell me they're Christians at work, and I appreciate that. I mean, they know I'm a preacher, so therefore they're on their best behavior. And so they tell me they are Christian believers. But the problem is, is that whenever I'm around them, or maybe they don't know I'm around them, but even after I've been around them a while, they become accustomed to me, then they start slipping out cuss words. Well, what they say comes from the heart. And so from the heart, you can't, be clean and thinking godly things and saying evil things. It doesn't work. Bitter and sweet water don't mix. And so, uh, out of the heart, our mouth speaks. Well, our heart is very important because Proverbs tells us, guard your heart. Proverbs 4, we're not going to turn there. You can look at it later, 423 to 27. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. In other words, what you're churning on down here, what your desires, what you love, what you hold on to, what you feed in here. You can tell what spirits you entertain by what you put in front of your eyes. Think about it. You, you, you entertain uh, horror shows on TV or horror books. You're entertaining the spirit of fear. You, you entertain uh, love stories. Ooh, ooh. Well, you're off in some romance land, la-la land, not real life. You can tell what spirits by those things you're feeding in, what you're nurturing. Hallelujah. So verse 46, Jesus continues. They put a paragraph here, but uh, I 
consider it to be all the same subject. Except it's no longer a parable. He's just speaking to them. He says, Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Now remember, in context with the fact that he said in verse 40 that we're not above the teacher, the master, but when we're mature or perfect, we're like the master. Verse 46 says, You're calling me master or Lord, but you're not doing those things that I'm telling you to do. Interesting, isn't it? Verse 47 says, Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings. How does faith come? By hearing. By hearing. And doeth them. Now note he said, Whosoever comes to me, number one, hears me, number two, and number three, does them. You come, you hear, you do. That's a, that can preach right there. I mean, I could spend the rest of the morning on that. Okay? But we're going we're gonna to continue on. He said, whoever comes to me, hears my saying, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he's like. Verse 48. He's like a man which built a house, dig deep, laid the foundation on a rock, and when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. That, that's, in these end times, that's where we want to be. Okay? But he that hears and doeth not, look at this. You reason it away, you excuse it away. It's not the way I've been used to doing it, Pastor. Uh, it's not the way my church taught me, Pastor. Um, it, it didn't work last time, Pastor. Whatever reason you use to excuse away the Word of God is like a man without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream again beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of it was great well praise the Lord we believe for better things for us amen but you see here faith comes by hearing the word correct okay but now look in James that's Romans ten seventeen. by the way faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God but James chapter 2, I just want to point this out to you. We went there last week, but we didn't really finish it all. Um, I've been saying I was going to be finished with this teaching for a few weeks now. But anyway, I believe today we will. James 2 and verse 22 says, See how, Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect now he's just said in Luke 640 that you're not the master but if you're going to be like the master then you'll be perfect you'll be mature well here then he said read on down said if you're you come to me you hear me and you do what I say do then you're built on a firm foundation and although everything tries to tear it down it will not succeed uh, Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. But if you just hear the Word of God and acknowledge it, then it just stays there in that form, in that shape. But if you'll put works to it, that means an action. In other words, you believe it so much, it becomes your action. Then that perfects it, matures it, makes it usable, workable. Okay, James 2.22 says it. See how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. The problem is today in our society, in the church, much of the church is teaching today that God does it all for you. I don't have to do anything. You've heard the saying, well, if it was meant to be, it'll be. Must not have been God's timing. Must not have been supposed to happen. Or God would have made it happen. I have problems with that. Now, there is a timing to God. I don't have a problem with God's timing. But I have a problem when it's an excuse. There is a part you and I have to do in all this. Look in 
Philippians, if you would, Philippians chapter 2. Now, this is a sobering scripture. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12 says, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out, work out, that sounds like in the gym to me, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's pretty interesting. In other words, there's some work involved here. I cannot work to be saved. Okay? Not like the world thinks of work. Not like much of the church thinks of work. I'm going to explain here. Stay with me because i got 15 more minutes and I'm going to try to explain it in 15 minutes. Please note here that the command is to work. So it's not just all grace. Okay? Please don't take that statement out of context. All that Jesus did for us is grace. And he did it all. However, he's telling us here there is a part we play in this. Okay? Our job is to work to believe it. The finished work, that is. Okay? In other words, I'm not to labor for uh, some physical thing trying to help God, trying to twist God's arm with a work, I can't do that. It won't work. Hallelujah. But my job is to labor in this word until I believe it enough that God power works. Are you okay with that? John 6. Look there. John 6. And verse 27, Jesus is talking. He says, don't labor for the meat that perishes, natural things, but for the meat which endures unto everlasting life, spiritual things, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Well, they were curious. They didn't understand spiritual things. They didn't have the Holy Ghost. And uh, they wanted to do right. So they said to him, verse 28, what do we do that we might work the works of God? The works of God are the mirac miracles. It's referred to many times as the miraculous. Okay? And they said, well, what do we do to work the works of God? Jesus answered and said, this is the work of God. Ingrain this in your heart, saints. This is the work you're to do. Everything God has done is grace. All right? But what, are your, what is your part? What are you to do? This is what you're to do. It's not that you have to cut your hair a certain way. It's not that you have to wear a particular outfit. Uh, it's not that you have to worship on a particular day. Um, it is that you're to believe on him who he sent. Well, that would be the word of God here, the Bible. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Same was in the beginning with God. Okay, so Jesus himself said, here is what your works are to be. To believe. Well, real belief is an action. It's not just an agreement of acknowledging, yeah, sounds right, seems right. I'm not so sure. Remember we talked about the guy on the high wire and in the barrel in Niagara Falls. You know, there's a big difference and really believing and just saying, yeah, I think he can make it. But you got to get in the barrel to go over it while he does it. And you're not so sure whether you believe anymore or not. Yeah. Those of you who were here last week know what I mean. The rest of you had to get the tape. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> well, once, see, the, the, the key is once you have made a decision to believe, there's resistance. Tremendous resistance sometimes. So you must work or practice or labor, if you please, to continue what you initially set out and said you believed. You've got to understand the difference between grace and works, though. Grace is all that God has done for you, it's finished, it's over. It's done. 
Hallelujah. We are to come to this grace. We're to hear this grace. And we're to receive it. Act on it. All right? Isn't that what Jesus said? When we, the works that we're talking about in believing is that it's a spiritual thing. In other words, sometimes for me to labor to believe something when all hell is assaulting my senses on it is more work than if I dug a ditch out there when it's all done and finished. I mean, it just, it's, 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 it's intense to say the least. But you have to look at it. You know, many times they'll say, why don't you just give up? You know, why don't you just stop? Let's be like the other Christians. You know, don't worry about it. Well, what are the alternatives? What you're doing, you're, you are believing the Almighty God's grace that's bringing victory in your life. It's already done, but you're believing and experiencing it. However, if you give up, what do you go back to? Bondage. Whatever bondage is on you. So it, the enemy, the slick thing of the enemy is he tries to make you think it'd be easier to give up. But what he does, it's like a spider web. You're stuck. When you say, yeah, maybe I'll just give up. This doesn't work anyway. Well, what you've done is you got sucked into that spider web and it's enveloped you. And now it's back in that bondage and it's worse. So that's not an alternative, saints. It's not an alternative. Now listen, I need to caution you that if I work to make something happen, I'm talking about a situation, a circumstance on earth, if I work to make it happen by my efforts, I'm under the curse. I know this is confusing some of you because it's using some of the same terminology, but you have to listen close to me, please. I, that's why I'm taking my time. I'm not shouting and jumping this morning. I'm just trying to lay this down where you'll get it. Okay? Because I love you. And I want you to be free. And I want you to experience all the grace that's been provided for you. But if you're working for it, in the sense of trying to twist God's arm, in the sense of trying to be good enough, in the sense of trying to earn it by something you're doing, you're under the curse. And when you're under the curse, you reap the fruit of the curse. Look in Galatians chapter 3. Wow. Galatians chapter 3. And verse 10 says, For as many as are of the works of the law. The difference between the law and grace is that under the law, I had to work to obtain a blessing from God. I had to earn it. That's the, all the Old Testament. You've got to understand this so you'll understand the differences. But in the New Testament, Jesus did it for me, for you. He did earn it for us. And then he gave us that grace saying it's yours. It's all yours. And so now in the New Testament, I no longer am trying to achieve it my job is to believe that I have it. Now, that's a vast difference, but some of it went over like, whoo, over your head. If I'm working to get it, always, oh, it's so tough, it's so hard, oh, oh. What some consider laboring, not the time I was talking about, then you're just staying under the curse you're trying to do it yourself in your own strength in your own power in your own goodness in your own merit of some sort you can't nobody's been able to but Jesus lay it down you can't what you have to do is use that energy you are using to try to twist God's arm or manipulate him somehow use that energy to get into the word and to believe the grace that is already done on your behalf hallelujah well 
He says here, as many as under the works of the law under the curse, for it's written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. Well, that's not us anymore. Hallelujah. But if we labor to enter into this rest, into his grace, then what we're saying is, I see it. It's mine now. And now I'm take it. I receive it. But there's resistance in the taking it. There's lots. Hallelujah. The Lord says he supplies all my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I know that. I've come to him. I've heard it. But the doing of it is another challenge. The Bible clearly says multiple times by his stripes I was healed in some fashion or form. The blessing of God um, in Psalm 103 that he's healed all my diseases. I mean there's multiple accounts of, of saying some kind of form that I'm healed. But I find myself trying to work to earn it. Lord I prayed three hours this morning but the pain's still there. Lord, you know I went to church every day this month that it was open. You see what I've done, Lord, now. But my body, Lord, hello? I mean, it looks spiritual, it seems spiritual, but it's not. It's depending on yourself. Hallelujah. If I work to obtain it, then I'm under that curse. But if I can believe that it's already done, take it, receive it, that's grace. But there is some effort involved in believing it. That's what I'm saying. Because your natural mind fights you, your physical body fights you, demonic forces, the gates of hell fight you. Look in Galatians 2, verse 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. He's justified by the faith of Jesus Christ. What faith did Jesus have? You find that in Mark eleven twenty two. Have the faith of God, Jesus said. Mark eleven twenty two. Have the faith of God. Galatians two. In verse 16, you're not justified by the works of the law, your own efforts, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. His faith. Okay? Hallelujah. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11 says, We're to fulfill the work of faith with power. That's our position. The work of faith, the work of Hello? Work of faith with power. Ephesians 1 and 19 says, What is the exceeding greatness? Look at that. Look real quick. Like Ephesians, just the next book over. 1 and verse 19. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 